There's been ongoing protests in St. Louis for quite some time now. It is about yet another police officer who got away with killing a black man. And on tape, he seemed to be putting a gun on the body of the person afterwards. His DNA was on the gun. The victim's DNA was not on the gun. He said earlier that he was gonna go kill him, and he did. But once again, not guilty. So very understandably, the community is outraged and, and they've been doing protests led by Cori Bush and others. Um, so uh, we covered one of those protests at TYT. Uh, Jordan Charrington was there, he's a reporter, and Ty Bayless, uh, our cameraman and editor were on the scene. And they got arrested, which is outrageous and unacceptable and an attack on freedom of the press. Let's show you a quick a clip of when that happened live. Uh, they are uh, arresting, threatening to arrest the press here. And they're about to uh, pepper spray people. Why are you under like. arrest? Why am I under arrest? Why is he under arrest? For what? Excuse me, why is he under arrest? Officer, why, why is he under arrest? Do not get away, get away from me. Do not face uh, so me again. He, he's about to pepper spray me. So they're. Uh, yeah, so they're arresting, it seems, uh, journalists who covered a uh, peaceful demonstration. Uh, they, I thought there was a freedom of the press in the First Amendment, but I guess not in St. Louis. Sir, you're under arrest. Can you put this hand on your back, please? And do that what you need to do. What the police did there was uh, they penned the protesters and the press and the legal observers into an area. There was a wall behind them, and they did three lines surrounding them. Uh, and did not give them a chance to leave. They arrested the reporters first, actually to be more accurate, they arrested the cameramen first, then the reporters, then the legal observers, and then finally the protesters. Gee, I wonder why they did it in that order. So then uh, Jordan Cheriton, the reporter uh, who was arrested and uh, obviously wrongfully so, and uh, will be looking to uh, find a way to, to make sure that that uh, is adjudicated uh, to be wrong. Uh, asked the mayor of St. Louis, uh, her office, uh, it's Lydia uh, or Lydia Krusen, who is the mayor of St. Louis. And uh, they put out an, uh, a statement that sounds nice. They said, every journalist has a constitutionally protected right to cover these demonstrations. Any allegation that those rights were not recognized or protected is troubling, which is why I have asked the US Attorney's Office to conduct an independent investigation into these claims. Now, if you're looking to get rid of a problem, that's a good statement. All right, but Jordan then pointed out, but wait, you're the mayor. You actually have the authority to order the cops not to do it again. You can say, hey, if there's another protest, under no circumstances are you allowed to arrest reporters or legal observers. You could also tell them to not hit the protesters with their shields or, your, or use tear gas or pepper spray or mace. You could order them to do all of these things. But So he asked her about that and then they put out another statement. Not saying that they would do that, instead saying this. Freedom of the press is a foundational right in our country. Mayor Krusen has nothing but deep respect for the work journalists do to shed light on the most pressing issues of the day. Our democracy can only function if the press is respected and allowed to report truthfully um, on current events. Now, uh, she also though, though went on to say, the majority of St. Louis Metropolitan Police officers have faithfully uh, fulfilled their commitment to protecting the safety of our citizens and city. And she is committed to holding accountable those who do not respect the freedoms guaranteed under our constitution. In other words, uh, no, 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 the majority of the cops are totally fine, fine, fine. So now there might be a few bad apples where we've seen that before. And we will later do an investigation about those. Well, how about telling them now about what not to do going forward? We'll be doing an investigation, get back to you maybe later. Uh, about what they can and can't do. No, come on. No, it's okay. I don't think it's remotely good enough. Uh, if you allow cops to arrest members of the press and nobody, nobody does anything about it, they will continue to arrest members of the press and it will get larger and larger. Those, that's a deeply unconstitutional thing to do. If you allowed the press uh, to be arrested during the civil rights era, we never would have seen the pictures from Selma, Alabama or anywhere else. Because they would have said, "Oh no, no, no! You, you know, they're doing civil disobedience. They're in a place where the cops told them not to be, and the reporters are also in the place where cops told them not to be. That's how they got the pictures. You're all under arrest, and give me your cameras. That's why we have freedom of the press in the country, so that you can't do things like that if you're the government." Now, uh, I'm going to go to 
um, another publication here, the St. Louis American, who actually did a great job of um, covering this story and explaining why the mayor would might be going in the direction that she did. First, they remind you that when the protest first began, in her first statement, quote, the day after an occupying police force trapped and tear gassed a crowd in our own neighborhood, Krusen said, law enforcement, each of you has my full support. The protests begin, the cops overstep. She goes, no, 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 they were in my neighborhood. You have my full support, each of you. Now, there might be investigations later, okay. So now, let's go into why that might be the case. Napoleon Robertson and Caitlin Lee for the St. Louis American. On Tuesday, September 19th, Mayor Lydia Krusen postponed her three remaining town halls across the city. This followed four days of protests met with aggressive police force after the acquittal of former St. Louis Metropolitan Police Officer Jason Stockley. She wrote, town halls are happening in the streets and in my inbox and on social media right now, we're listening. Despite her assurances otherwise, many residents interpreted this as their mayor dodging venues meant to hold her accountable to their serious concerns and pain. <laughs> town halls are happening in my inbox is not a real thing. That means I don't want to do a town hall. You already sent me angry emails, which I already deleted. Okay, to be fair, I don't know what she does with them. I don't know if she deletes them or not. Uh, but clearly, she didn't want anything to do with those town halls to listen to her citizens. Yes, they would be angry, we know that. But you're their mayor, you're supposed to hear their anger. And you're supposed to understand and appreciate why they're angry and maybe even address it. And not later, but now, okay. So they go on to explain, so in this pivotal moment, if Mayor Krusen won't listen to her constituents in town halls, who is she listening to? Perhaps it's her donors. After all, the protests financially impact many of them. Ooh, that's very interesting. Let's find out more about that. For example, both St. Louis Union Station and its parent company, Lodging Hospitality Management, which operates hotels and restaurants, made significant donations to Krusen during her campaign. LHM's leadership team spoke to the Post Dispatch about significant lost revenue from downtown concerts canceled in response to the protests around the verdict. Oh, Folks are losing money, donors are losing money. It's so one thing if you want to protest and it doesn't cost any money, but you're costing my donors money by those canceled concerts, now we got a real issue. Okay, not one enough serious enough to do a town hall though. Krusen's mayoral campaign had a larger and more affluent donor base than the other mayoral candidates, including her top competitor, uh, Jones, who came in a close second. Krusen's donors include a vast network of local developers, construction unions, and real estate professionals in addition to the legal and law enforcement communities, PR firms, and finance and business executives. Now, this is not the first time you're gonna hear this from me, but think about how insane our system is that private interests finance our elections. Who do you think they're gonna serve? Of course they're gonna serve private interests that give them the private financing. It's insane, we have to publicly finance all elections so there's at least a chance that they serve the public interest. 93% of Americans believe that politicians serve their donors over their voters. Why? Because it's obvious, it's obvious. Those donors gave her the money to win. In, in Congress, this is a local issue, but in Congress, 95% of the time, the person with more money wins. Why do you think the politicians go suck up to the donors? So when the donors complain, wait a minute, I'm losing revenue here, and I got the cop union, and I got the other unions, and I got the PR firms, and I got the finance executives, and the business executives, but mainly the real estate guys. Who do you think Cruz is gonna work for? Many of these donors, they continue to explain in the St. Louis American, many of these donors benefited from Cruz's 20 years in City Hall, during which she focused investment and public resources in the city's central corridor, where many of the verdict protests are taking place. Hmm. Consequently, her donors' investments hinge on a quiet return to business as usual. There you have it. So in St. Louis, this is very relevant. It appears to be relevant to the mayor, but it's also relevant throughout the country. The reason why a lot of the mainstream press want everything to go back to business as usual and call anything else radical. The reason why the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, and by the way, she's a Democrat, um, want everything to remain in the status quo is people profit from the status quo. The rich and powerful love this system 
because this is the system that made them rich and powerful. They don't want change. They don't want issues to be addressed. They might want issues addressed around the corners and the edges, maybe enough so you have change on the outside, but continuity on the inside. But mainly, they just want the machine going, going just like it always has. So when you do those protests, you are an annoyance to them. God bless your hearts. We're Americans. We're supposed to protest our government. We're supposed to demand that our government represents us. It's called a democracy. We were among the first to do it across the world. We champion it across the world. We should think about practicing it here at home, including in St. Louis. Yes, the police should be told immediately that they are not to arrest reporters at protests. They should also consider maybe putting some thought into why there's so many protests in the first place and address that as well immediately. Young Turks. If you like the Young Turks, you'll love Young Turks membership. TYTnetwork.com slash join.